All right, we'll be starting in a few minutes. And we have a great audience that's plugging into the program tonight as well. And it's lovely to see all of you that have come here. We thank you for that. We hope to have a good discussion and robust interaction. We're just waiting for our panelists to settle down. And uh, we'll start in a few minutes. All right, you can, if we can settle down, once we've got silence, we can commence the proceedings for this evening. Our panelists are seated. They're ready for action. No bias towards action, I say. Just an expression. OK, 
Okay, okay. I'm just going to ask once again. Let's have absolute silence so we can get the house rules clearly understood by everything. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I begin with the universal Islamic greeting of peace, blessings, and uh, mercy. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, panelists. It's lovely to have you all here. First and foremost, let's keep safe. Uh, we all want to leave here. Radio Islam International. We would like to welcome the panelists, and I'll introduce them in a bit. We'd also like to welcome our media partners. This program is being carried by Voice of the Cape in Cape Town. It's been carried, carried by IFM in Port Elizabeth. It's been carried by Sanam Media in Johannesburg. And it's been carried by ITV on DSTV, uh, on the DSTV platform. That's apart from Radio Islam International's various platforms that are carrying this particular debate and the live view. Every election, it's the cornerstone of our democracy. So this election takes place at a very difficult and a very challenging time in our history. Silence, please. We just come off the back of almost two years of the pandemic. We also had the recent rioting and looting in our country. South Africa is grappling with a number of issues on a sustained basis. Lack of service delivery, corruption, crime, false promises. Many voters, many South Africans are disillusioned. They are dejected. They are wondering that why should I vote? What's the point? And there is a point. It's still important to vote. Actually, we would say it's more important to vote. And that's why Radio Islam's slogan for this election broadcast has, has been why your vote still matters. It still matters and it will always matter. And that is the reason why we have these kind of debates and discussions. It's not just for the entertainment value or for the nice atmosphere. It's for the discussion. It's for you to make, to pose questions, to hear the questions that are posed, and to listen to the answers so that you can make an informed decision, so that your vote is an informed one, and so that your vote is for the betterment of South Africa, inshallah, God willing. Now, it's not possible to have everyone who's standing for elections uh, around the table. Now, at Radio Islam, for the last couple of weeks and in the coming days on a daily basis on all on many of our drive time programs and political programs we have various debates pertaining to the local wards pertaining to other regions of our broadcast area but this year is a very unique kind of setup and i want to explain to explain it up front because we are a broadcaster that's a community radio station based in Indonesia but we don't only broadcast to Indonesia we broadcast to the better part of Gauteng on our one platform which is medium wave then we are on the DSTV platform, which is national. And then we are on the free-to-air satellite platform, which is also national. And then tonight we've got all these other media partners from across the country. So this is not a Ward 9 or a Ward 10 debate as such. The purpose here is to discuss issues relevant to the local government elections, but having on the panel people with a local profile, with a regional profile, and with a national profile, so that we kind of cover those tiers and have a discussion around that. But those who are present from here obviously have different issues that are close to their heart, relevant to the places to where they live, and they are free to ask when we come to that particular segment of the, of the discussion and debate to ask whatever questions that um, they want to ask. Our panelists, I'll start with uh, the right, we all know, Imran Musa from uh, Al Jama'a, he's currently the counselor here at Ward 9. Herman Mashaba is the head of uh, the newly formed Action SA Party. Name with logo or name without logo, I don't know that the courts will decide how it's going to reflect on the ballot. Then we've got um, the EFFs, Nazir Paulson. He was sharing with us an interesting incident, you know. Sometimes when people see him on TV in parliament, they get a bit scrick of him, but he's a nice guy. Then we've got Sergio Isa Dos Santos representing the DA this evening. And uh, we've got uh, Zarina Mutala who's a candidate for Ward uh, 9 year in Indonesia. So all to all our panelists, Assalamu Alaikum and welcome. Thank you so much for your time. I know um, to some extent, but I can't imagine, only you would know what it's like when you're campaigning as, uh, as a politician. I don't think you know night from day. I don't think you know sleep. And uh, I think everyone has good intentions. Everyone has good motives. Uh, and let's have a good discussion. A few house rules, people. We are happy to see 
that um, the different parties have their supporters, have their members here, and we appreciate that you would be expressive. But listen, don't overwhelm the discussion of the panelists because they are the representatives of your party. When you do that, it's actually a negative, negative thing for your party and your representative. It's almost like you saying that you don't have confidence in your representative to be able to answer the questions. A debate is a debate. Some of the questions will be tough. Some of the questions you may not agree with, but that's the nature of the discussion. And these are seasoned politicians, and they, they appreciate that. So you can applaud your candidate, you'll get your chance to answer questions, but let's not have any heckling, let's not have any screaming and shouting and overpowering the voice of those people whose voices we want to hear in terms of the answers that they need to give this evening. Because that, that kind of defeats the purpose of our congregating here this evening and all those who are listening and all those who are watching. And I'm, I'm, I'm confident that you'll comply. We've had many such debates in the past, and in the main, they have gone uh, fairly well. The structure is that we will start off and we'll ask each candidate to tell us about their manifesto, about what they represent, what they stand for, or in short, why people should vote for them or for their party. And each will be allocated 90 seconds. There's a clock a timekeeper here. So as soon as you hear the sound in the mic, you know your time is up. Then the second round will be where I get to ask a few questions to each of the, of the candidates. And listen, we all get along very well. There's nothing personal. They get along very well amongst themselves, and we with the media also get along very well. But yeah, it's business. So don't feel that, you know, the question is too tough or why that question is asked. If a question is asked and the person is not answering the question, there'll be an interjection. Come back and answer the question. <laughs> it's nothing personal. So give your candidates uh, the opportunity to, to answer the questions, right? Then we will uh, allow the party representatives to ask each other questions. I'm looking forward to that round. Last but obviously not least, we come to you and we try and give you as much time as possible to ask questions and to make comments uh, to the panelists that we have uh, before us. So those are a few ground rules, very straightforward, very simple. We're going to get started now. And uh, in between, if there's a need for me to explain anything, I'll do that. So first up, we've got, and I'm just going to go in the order that they are, are seated. We're asking, remember, each party member or each party representative in 90 seconds, it's up to them. They can tell us about their manifesto, what they stand for, in short, why you should vote for them. Uh, Imran Musa from Al Jama'a, your 90 seconds starts now. Assalamu alaikum, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I would like to thank the organizers for the opportunity of presenting myself and my party this evening. At Al Jama'a, our manifesto is all about making the difference and being the political party striving in bringing service delivery to Lanasia. You've seen the difference, you know the difference in the very short while that you've seen me leading by example on the ground, showing you the heartbeat of what is happening in Lanasia. You see the activities, you see and you know and you feel your ward councillor all the time around you. I have an open door policy of 24 hours. You contact me, you're most welcome to contact me. Each resident of Lanasia or resident in the other wards as well has a constitutional and basic right as follows. The right to dignity and honor and respect. The right to safety and security. The right to decent housing and to ensure the regular maintenance of our infrastructure. The right to health care and employment. The right to education and youth development. Furthermore, Al Jama is here to deliver, to serve, and not to make false promises. I repeat, and not to make false promises. I make no promises. And also to serve and not be served. A socio-economic conscience coupled with spiritual belief shall further help us to better our community and achieve all that we strive for. We offer transparency and commit ourselves to being accountable to you, the resident of Malaysia. Same question to you, Mr. Herman Mashaba. Mr. Herman Mashaba, your 90 seconds starts now. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for this opportunity to be uh, invited physically on the platform of uh, uh, your, your, your radio station. It's really a great pleasure. You know, for us as Section SA, a new party, but a big party. We're not a small party any longer. We are not in this uh, game uh, to really be on the opposition benches because we believe as a party the only way we can make a difference in the lives of our people to be in government. That's why 
when you look at our policies and our, form, our manifestos and our approach to local government, that's why we took a conscious decision to focus our energies on six municipalities. Six municipalities where we know we are going to govern. We are going to govern on our own or we might have to govern with, with certain uh, uh, other parties if they, obviously they the voters do decide that uh, we, 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 we are in a coalition uh, arrangement. We want to revitalize our inner cities. Uh, this whole day, to, I was uh, obviously launched our inner city rejuvenation play, play, plan where our people today, 27 years into our democracy, live in squalor. Our, our people are, are un unemployed. In the meantime, the city, 27 years later, has been turned into a slum. What we are saying, this is totally un unacceptable. I can give you an example. I'm with my wife. I was coming here with her before I got married to her more than 40 years ago. We used to come here in, in, in Lenesia to come and watch uh, movies uh, and so forth. And I look at uh, Lenesia today, instead of uh, the community of entrepreneurs, hardworking people, Time is up. the country, then the city is going backwards. Thank you. Thank you. Nazir Paulson of the EFF, your 90 seconds starts now. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa to the mic. Hold it in your hand if you want. Okay, sure. <laughs> um, uh, Brother Suleiman, um, the EFF's manifesto is the manifesto that was, that we have compiled with inputs from citizens across this country. We went into wards, we went into towns, we, we had community meetings, and citizens across this country told the EFF what it is that they want done in their ward. So our manifesto embodies the wishes of the people of this country. And if we, if we go through that manifesto, it tends to reverse the centuries of ill-treatment, subjugation, and inhumanity that African people have been subjected to in the land of their birth. It's now a fact beyond doubt that the former liberation movement has failed and is nearing its end and is in a state of disintegration. So rather than serve the black colonized people of this country, they became the managers for the white and the elite people here than to uplift black people in this country. So the EFF has the sole purpose of reversing centuries of subjugation of the people of this country. Shukran so much. Shukran. Okay, representing the DA, we have uh, Sergio Issa de Santos. Your 90 seconds starts now. Jazakallah. Um, evening to, to everyone, and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam. We live in a beautiful country a country that has so many possibilities. We should be one of the leading developing countries in the world, but unfortunately, we are a broken country. We are, have so many broken municipalities. Just this week, it was revealed that over 104 municipalities are on the brink of uh, failure. We have richness in our diversity. The top five municipalities in, in South Africa are all run by the DA. 12 of the top 20 municipalities run in South Africa are all run by the DA. But we can get this done in all our municipalities across South Africa. And we believe that the seven pillars that we have, we will be able to achieve this from the 1st of November. And that's by getting the basics right, service delivery. That is getting safety and security within our cities. That is having a city that is caring towards the residents. That is building a city that has work and investment opportunities for everyone. It is about having an inclusive city for, for everyone. It's about having a city that is well run, that works for the, uh, for the residents of um, not only Johannesburg, but of South Africa. And we also believe in having a smart city. And we believe that with these seven pillars, we will be able to achieve not only what we have achieved in those top 12 municipalities in the top 20. Thank you. All right, and Zarina Mutala of the ANC, your 90 seconds starts now. Assalamu alaikum, I greet you all in the name of peace. The ANC has a national manifesto. 
to the mic or bring it closer to you. The ANC has a national manifesto. Last night, all ANC councillors throughout the country had pledged our manifesto to our people. We have been in the campaign, which we call the wall to wall throughout the country, and I think the ANC has been very well received. The ANC pledges to spare no effort in rooting out corruption. It's a huge issue for the ANC. And in that, to root out corruption in all forms of nepotism, maladministration in the organization at all levels of government. I pledge to work with integrity in this community and the surrounding areas. I pledge to promote local economic development, working with business partners across all the wards in this constituency in, and in our region. And we can only do this together. The informal sector, the business sector, all contribute to the economy of our country. I pledge to focus on basic service deliveries, but I think in the past 10 years, we have seen a total decline. The, this ward, Ward 9 in particular, I'm going to just bring that back, has not been under the ANC banner for the past 10 years. We have seen an extreme decline in Indonesia and surrounding areas, including the CBD. We need to ensure that we're going to improve the situation Time. in the CBD. I thank you. Thank you. Shukra. I would like to thank all the panelists for adhering to the time allocation there and for the discipline in the crowd as well. Thank you. We're going to just remind our listeners on Radio Islam International, on Salam Media, on Voice of the Cape, on IFM and on ITV that there's a WhatsApp number 072-786-1548. That's 072-786-1548. You can WhatsApp your questions. We may not be able to get through all of them, but we will try and uh, pose a few of those questions too the respective panelists. Now, I'm going to go in reverse order, starting with uh, Zarina. Uh, they'll, each panelist will be allowed, again, 90 seconds to answer the question. Uh, Zarina, the 2021 Auditor General report paints a very bleak picture. The finding is that a quarter of municipalities are in such a dire state that their viability, viability is in doubt. And most of these municipalities are controlled by the ANC. In this week, News 24's Out of Order Index which did its calculations from a set of, a set of data collated, collated over the last two months has suggested that the crisis in terms of service delivery at municipality level is likely to deepen. And this index of News 24 has found that the highest scoring municipalities are governed by the DA and some of the worst performing municipalities are governed by the ANC. The question therefore is, many voters, loyal ANC voters, are, are wondering why should we believe the party's promises this time around? Uh, when things have not improved during the party's ex extended period of governance. Thank you, Malana. I'm going to focus on the Johannesburg Metropolitan Municipality. It's been a very tough five years and very unstable. We've had a coalition in the first three years. The ANC then governed with its government of local unity partners. And then we had COVID, and we are where we are today. But I just want to, ex to inform the listeners, when we started off in 2016, we had a huge budget of 38.3 3, billion rand. Within two years, that budget had just disappeared. The funding had disappeared. Okay, we had lots of things that had in-funding, uh, in-sourcing, and things that didn't, I think the previous administration had taken away from us. I don't want to dwell too much elections are about the future. And can I just say that to this end, when we look at the order the general reports, and we look at the order uh, at the kind of funding we had, okay, there was I must admit we have made some mistakes. There was some funding that was not uh, spending, funding that was not used, but by and large, I think under the five years, we had managed to service our people. Also remember the influx of the land invasion had had a huge impact on this area and other areas in Johannesburg in particular. But going forward, the elections are about the future. We are on track and I'm very confident that we will serve our people to the best that we can and I think we are the kind of leadership that is going to do that. Thank you. A quick follow-up there, Zarina. What would you say to those who are under the perception that 
the better functioning municipalities in the country are run by the DA, and some of the worst performing municipalities are run by the ANC, as reflected in this index that I referred to. I think you have to look, and I'm going to bring it back. I think it's a very important question, but I think I want to just delve on the municipality that I work in, and I think I'm best just to give information on that. Now, let, let us respect the panelists. by itself is a very unique, a very unique area, a very unique metropolitan. And you have people from all over coming to do their livelihoods and coming into the province where they feel there is hope for them. And that is the kind of hope we do provide. And I think we've seen that, the examples are there. Why else would everybody else want to be flocking to Johannesburg and to the Gauteng province in particular? Shukra. So we are doing something right. Shukra. All right. No, let us, let us respect the analysts, right? We can, we can disagree with them in, when, when we ask them the questions a little later. Uh, Sergio Issa, I want to talk about housing, and, and I'm lifting this from the DA's manifesto, right? The DA seems to be admitting in Cape Town, where it governs, and in the Western province, uh, that there has been little to no social housing in the inner city that has been built. You blame the national government, uh, budgeting, and, and that kind of thing, but others say that the S Cape Town, for example, has been under DA control for the better part of 15 years. Now, you're promising in Cape Town alone 2,000 new units. Then you're making promises on a, on a more broader level with regards to other parts of the country. In specific, how are you going to deliver in terms of the promises that you've made in your manifesto when it comes to housing? And the emphasis is on the how. Because many voters complain that when you look at the manifestos of political parties, they almost look like a wish list. You get somebody who's good with words and they can put together some flowery language uh, and very little is delivered. So the emphasis on, on, on the how when it comes to housing. Yeah, look, the misconception is that the majority of the budget when it comes to housing sits with either local government or with the province. And majority of the budget actually does not come from, from those two spheres of government. It actually comes from national government. And we have seen over the years that Western Cape in particular is generally receiving less budgets compared to other ANC-run provinces. And that is one of the biggest issues that we have as uh, as, as um, city of Cape Town as Western Cape. But the fact remains is that we have built more houses in the Western Cape in the few years that we have been in government compared to ANC in most municipalities. Bringing it down to a Johannesburg level, we also believe in inclusive um, mixed units that's number one. Number two, we also believe in giving a, um, like a voucher system where people will be able to get these vouchers and be able to build their own uh, homes. Because a lot of the homes that we have seen, including the little Jojo hut that we've seen recently in the media, <laughs> the corruption that goes into building some of these homes is astro uh, astronomical. So where we believe that if we give these vouchers, people will build their own homes with pride. And that is one of the, the things that we believe as the Democratic Alliance. A quick follow up on that. There is this perception, and I want you to address the perception, that the DA is excellent at governing its old constituencies, but failing in the new ones. The perception is that when it comes to white areas, middle class areas, that the DA is very good. When it comes to other areas, uh, non-white, underprivileged, uh, it doesn't seem to feature on the on, on, on high up on the priority list. It doesn't seem to gel with the with the with the makeup and the approach of of, of DA. For sure. Look again. That's also perception and the propaganda. Now it's not us that are saying it. If we look at ratings Africa, we look at Cocta, we look at Stats SA, we look at Auditor General, and again, as you mentioned earlier, News 24 Index. All these independent institutions are saying that where the DA governs, the DA governs better. And in terms of Stats SA, um, in DA municipalities, it has been proven that it is the most pro-poor government in the whole of the country compared to the ANC. And it's not us, it's independent institutions that are saying that. Thank you. Nazir. You know, I'm an avid reader, but you guys' manifesto is long. <laughs> Anyway, I know you're going to say that you put in a lot of hard work and that it shows that there's a lot of uh, thought processes and planning, but I do wonder that how many of the average citizens of this country would, would read your manifesto from uh, beginning to end, but be that as it may. I want to I I 
talk to you and, and, and pose my question on the issue of land, right? Yes. We know it's a big issue. Yes. And I think, broadly speaking, everyone can agree to redistribute yes. land as your manifesto promises mm. uh, is a noble thing. But the, the key question is, again, the how. Do you, as a party, have the capacity to do these land audits that you talk about without causing further friction, without causing further division within already a very divided uh, nation? You talk in your manifesto about formalizing informal settlements. How are you as a party going to build the infrastructural capacity to do this, especially in relation to water, lighting, and, and, and sewage? Uh, you talk about going and, and using only unused municipal land. If that's the route you're going, then how, how different is that from what the other parties are suggesting, like Al Jamaa? So again, when it, when it comes to all of these promises regarding land, it's easy to put them in the manifesto to say, this is what we want to stand for, this is what we want to do. The specific question is, how? Uh, shukran so much, Molana. Molana, I think we have to rethink how municipalities are run. Right now, when we look at municipalities and you say, how oh, are you going to build houses? Well, no municipality builds houses. It's outsourced. The DA outsources to their friends, Oricon and those people. So they will build little matchbox of 40 square meters for black people. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, so, and 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 also to 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 be quite honest, there's enough money um, to pay for housing development in Cape Town. Last year alone, Cape Town sent back one billion rand unspent housing budget to National Treasury because they refused to build houses for black people. So, so we are saying that there's enough money available. Um, in 15 years, there's been no inclusive development in Cape Town. Cape Town, the housing system there is still very much along the apartheid spatial divide separating African, colored, Indian, whites from each other. There's no integration in Cape Town. So Cape Town, you can solve the land issue if you feel it's okay for a black man to go live in Constantia and Bishop's Court. But because those are exclusive areas, exclusive for white people, there will always be a shortage of land in Cape Town. So when we start inclusive development and we start developing houses in areas where there's land, there will be full integration and there is enough money. We won't be sending money back Time. to the National Treasury. Instead, we will be using it to build houses for black people and eradicate these squatter camps in Cape Town. 400 of them need to Shukran. be eradicated. Shukran. A quick follow-up there, right? I, I was interviewing Ibrahim Harvey, the political analyst and author earlier this week, and he said that when it comes to the issue of land and, and the other policies of the EFF, you guys pretend to be Marxist and socialist, but all you are is African nationalist. Your response to that? Well, um, you know, thank goodness for Marxism because finally African people in this country will experience equality, Maulana Rav. Finally, we will experience equality. We will no longer be third-class citizens in the land of our birth, thanks to Marxism, when we expropriate land to build our poor people. All right, thank you. Mr. Shmushaba. The issue I want to raise is that of xenophobia, and I think you would probably be expecting this question. You are accused of being too harsh on the issue of immigration and to the point of, of being xenophobic. You are accused of mooting for regulated migration and then going to the extent of, of being anti-foreigner. Now, your response has been that you have no issue with foreigners. You have issue with the government of the day, not ensuring the, the borders are, are, are secure, not getting so-called illegal foreigners documented properly and, and timelessly. The question is, we know the state of home affairs. We know how long it takes for the wheels to turn. It could be years before those who are not documented get to be documented. What's Action SA's position on what happens to those who are in the country without proper, proper documentation in the interim, in the meanwhile? Well, uh, thank you very much uh, for very pertinent uh, question of uh, trying to silence us as South Africans around this issue of uh, illegal immigration. This country, South Africa, was built at the back of migrants for the last three, four hundred years. And as a section I say, we're a full supporter. We believe in the rule of law. The rule of law is one of our core values. 
We are saying the 7 billion people of the world, we want them to come here into South Africa because that's the only way we can build this country and build our economy. But we want people of the world to come here legally and when they are here in South Africa, we want them to respect our laws. This is, this is something that is not negotiable. This is as a result of the failure of home affairs for many years under this ANC government who are captured by international criminal syndicates because they are one of those criminal syndicates. Thank you. Thank you. What we are saying as South Africa, you know, let me just give you an example. When I grew up, South Africans, anyone who did not work was a person who did not want to work. Today, 12 million South Africans are unemployed. And you tell us about open borders. South Africa is a sovereign country. We've got to first take care of our own people. If anyone is looking, if anyone is looking for, for, a one, for a united Africa, please go and look for it somewhere else. Not here in South Africa. Leave us alone as South Africa. We've got our own issues to take care of. Thank you. Time. We've got to get rid of And for South, for, and for South, for South Africa to survive. Time, time. Yeah. I get what you're saying. The question still remains, though. Those millions that are here in the country illegally, and home affairs will take years, if not decades, to document them properly. What should happen to them, in your view, in the interim? Can they stay? Well, I think, uh, look, you cannot really compromise the rule of law. When you have a constitution and you've got rules, you can't really be selective. So I'm appealing to people of South Africa, let's get rid of this criminal syndicate called ANC so that we can put in a government that can respect the sovereignty of South Africa. Thank you. OK, we come now to Imran Musa. I'll give you adequate time in between to applaud your candidates, but once the other candidates are hearing their question, let them be silent so they can understand the question and then we can hear the answer. Uh, Iman, this was not part of the questions that I had listed, but this went viral this afternoon, and I'm sure you, you, you're expecting this question. There's a tweet from SABC News in the Western Cape of a comment made, I think, sometimes today by your national leader, uh, Hanif Hendricks. It reads as follows, al Jama leader Hanif Hendricks says his party is not a religious body but a political party, although it was formed in a mosque. He says it is against the implementation of Sharia law in South Africa and anywhere else in the world. Hendrik says his party still struggles to attract Muslim votes and most supporters come from outside the faith. He was speaking to the SABC after the public broadcaster conducted a series of election manifestos. The simple question of his up, and, and I know this is in the minds of many people because it was lighting up the WhatsApp line here. Do you share these sentiments of your national leader that this is not a Muslim party or a religious party and that uh, there should not be Sharia law anywhere in the world? <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Mulana. Look, the obvious simple answer to that is that al jama actually means Ubuntu. al jama is a platform for all political parties. In as That's much as whatever we say, and whatever SABC News says, the reality of the matter is that we are one nation, we have to be humanitarian, and we have to understand the political dynamics of South Africa. Now, when one looks at South Africa and understands the dynamics, we, if you listen to many of the candidates here, we find ourselves in a situation where I think much of it boils down to integrity, trust, honesty in governance. So we need that type of go governance. With this, at the same time, you have to have some kind of a blend between your faith and the political dynamics of your country. So that's my response to you, Molana. OK, and I'm going to do a quick follow-up. And, and the reason I, I must just explain is that many Muslim voters uh, vote for parties that they feel represent their values. That's why I want you to give further clarification here. When, when Mr. Hendrick says that he's against the implementation of Sharia law, it could leave room for people to interpret that to mean that this is a secular political party that, not, that does not subscribe to uh, Islamic values. You can be a religious party, Islamic or Christian, and be inclusive. 
because values in many ways are universal. So the very specific question is, does Al Jamaa subscribe to Islamic values or is it now a secular party as Hanif Hendrik seems to be saying? Look, the, the, quiet. Can you give me a chance to answer? It's, it's very simple. The principles and values are in harmony with many other religions. Most of the religions, in fact, our democratic constitution also is in harmony with many of our divine laws, principles, and values. So in terms of what he's saying, I think it's a blend and understanding of wisdom that we need to be all inclusive of the blend of uh, faith as well as honesty, integrity, and, and, and adopt values so that this country can be run and governed in a way that we can be proud of as South Africans. So you're saying it's not an Islamic party, it's a party with universal values? I think it's a, it's, it's a party that is in harmony with many of the democratic values. And if you look at our constitution. Okay. Right. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Our constitution is very much in harmony with Quran, Bible, and many of the other books as well. So it is a party that is strictly uh, conformed to Islamic values, Islamic principles, and uh, I mean, it's, it's quite well known that this is in harmony with all the many uh, different divine books as well. All right, shukran. I'm not gonna go into the next round. I'll go back to Zarina of the ANC. If you could talk to us about the plans in place in as far as the ANC is concerned when it comes to addressing electricity and water in particular at municipal level. Uh, we don't need to go into the examples of the challenges that we've been having. Uh, we had a huge challenge with water here in Indonesia a couple of days ago. Electricity is ongoing apart from load shedding, aging infrastructure, etc. So what's in the pipeline from the ANC's perspective and specifically what is it about the plan this time around that makes you confident that it would work? There are huge challenges regarding the stable supply of electricity and water and that can be contributed to lots of facts. If you have, again, I said, with the influx of people and the informal settlements around, and all the people living there also require their basic needs of water and electricity. So the ANC from the Joburg municipality does have an infrastructure plan in place to raise the kind of funding over a 10-year period and to partner with the private sector to ensure that our backlog of infrastructure is attended to in the next 10 years. But also know that we're having lots of issues regarding vandalism. I'm not gonna talk about the problems, but we have a huge amount of people coming into our region, and they come here for the sole purpose. So people are needing water, they're needing electricity. We have upgraded the Nirvana substation. We are currently busy with a project with City Power that are drawing optic fiber across the pylons from the K43 right up to the Lanasia substation and that's gonna feed into the ESCOM pylons. So there are plans in place of upgrading infrastructure so we have stability. To this end, I also want to say, I have already lobbied the city of Johannesburg, the Joburg Water Department, to set aside a budget for capital expenditure to replace the aging infrastructure. So we are on track and we can assure you that going forward in the next five years, when I'm your counselor, I will be championing all these issues. Thank, Thank you. you. Sergio Issa, this is a question I have to ask, right, because the big majority of our audience is, is Muslim and this is a local government issue. Your manifesto talks about protecting the country's heritage. Yet there's been controversy of late in Cape Town about the new noise, nu noise nuisance bylaw. Now, Dan Plato came out gun blazing, saying we never criminalized the call of prayer for any religion. That is true. However, what you've been criticized for is not specifically exempting it from uh, the, the noise nuisance bylaw, thus leaving it, the call of prayer for Muslims and any other religion, vulnerable to complaints about noise levels. The, the reason I ask this question is that I've been doing these debates for quite some time, and many times in the Muslim community you get the feeling there's a bit of a trust deficit between the Muslim voter and, and the DA when it comes to issues that are close to the hearts of Muslims, be it masjids or in specific this very recent uh, contentious issue, uh, the calling out of the Adhan. Your response? Jazakallah for the question. Yeah, unfortunately, again, it's, it's the 
propaganda that gets spread about, about the Democratic Alliance. The fact remains, and people can laugh, the fact remains is that we came out clear that in terms of the review of the bylaw, that specific bylaw, we did not look at that aspect at that current time. So we were looking at other aspects, which I, if I'm not mistaken, was section 21 and 22 of the bylaw. I can't remember exactly what it was. But we weren't looking at the exemption of the, the oh, call to pray or church bells at the moment. But that we have made commitments that we will be looking at. Now the mayor has said that there is no chance that we will ban the, the zone. There is no chance that our, even the, our federal leader say that we will support the zone at no cost. So the fact remains is that any time that there is mention of the Azan or the Masjid or Democratic lines, there is that propaganda that gets spread immediately that we anti it. But the fact remains is that we have come out clear that we support the Azan. Cape Town is one of the most beautiful cities where you go there and you can hear the Azan going off. Why didn't, anyway. you, why didn't you specifically exempt it then from the nuisance bylaws or the noise nuisance bylaws? After consulting many religious bodies, and that was a specific request, and the impression is that you made that promise that it would be specifically exempted. True. In, if I'm not mistaken, it was in back in 2019, the first initial um, consultations with the religious leaders, as well as the community, had already commenced. We have already mm -hmm. made commitment that that part of the bylaw will be re-looked at. That, that we have given our commitment, and it's out there publicly. What we were currently looking at it was the, the, the section where we're talking about a um, displaced people, and that's what we were currently looking at. Now, it's part of the whole bylaw, but we were only specifically looking at those okay. one or two sections. Thank you. But we support the Azan 100%. Thank you. Nadir, what's the EFF's, EFF's plan of action when it comes to crime at municipal level, at ward level? What's workable and how? Molana, we must be harsh on crime. But we've also got to look at the systemic causes of crime. Poverty, joblessness. Now we know in this country we've been shedding jobs every year. There's none of the, none of the provinces or cities or municipalities has managed to create more jobs. In, f in fact, they've, they've outsourced more of the work, so they employ less people. So we've got to look at creating employment opportunities for especially youth, in order to reduce the levels of crime. But that doesn't stop us from being really hard on crime. So job creation is at the core of the EFF elections manifesto. Land and jobs. Land and jobs, manje. <laughs> and, um, How? How? Um, well, like I said, um, the the all municipalities are basically without capacity, especially the city of Cape Town. Everything is outsourced. Um, Herman insourced some capacity, thanks to the EFF. The city of Cape Town has outsourced everything to, to their white um, business friends. So when we insource things like housing construction, building roads, we'll be able to create jobs we'll be able to give them skills and keep young people off the streets and employed. We'll be able to create opportunities. The real problem that we Thank have you. is poverty, and there's poverty because there's a lack of jobs, and nobody is creating jobs because okay. municipalities feel it's not their duty to create jobs. Shukra. They leave it to their business partners to create jobs. Oh. The EFF-run okay. municipality of Cape Town, Johannesburg, Tswani, Thank you. Thank you. Kebeha, will create jobs for the people of the Okay, okay. Mr. Mishaba. I, I want your thoughts on the issue of service delivery. I mentioned in my introduction that uh, South Africans are very fed up with politicians who ask for second chances or multiple chances and then fail to deliver all over again. Um, for many years, the Joburg Council was run by the ANC. That changed in 2016 and you became the, DA, uh, the, the mayor under the DA's um, flag. I remember Fariel Hafiji writing a very scathing criticism to which you did respond, saying that nothing changed in the Mayfair area whilst you were mayor. There are many others who have made similar allegations and claims from various parts of Johannesburg, saying that they had great hopes when you had come in as the, the DA mayor that time 
and uh, when it came to service delivery, very little changed. So the question would be, now you've formed a new party, you're the head of that party, if you get the votes and you become the mayor or someone from your party becomes the mayor, what is likely to change in terms of service delivery? Solomon, I think anyone would ever think that you can address 170 billion rands infrastructure backlog with 8 billion rands in, in three years. That person must be living in another world. When I took over to Johannesburg, I did an exercise to see on the, uh, the, the uh, infrastructure backlog. Discovered that we're sitting with 170 billion rands infrastructure backlog because the ANC government since 1994, their focus was on changing street names, building names, and actually ever forgot that infrastructure needed to really be upgraded. So, so for anyone who'd really criticize us on that, must be living in another world. Please read uh, um, the end of report, which are prepared, given to the Auditor General, National Treasury, and all the rating agencies. Look at that report. By the time I left the city of Johannesburg, ANC has never spent, the infrastructure spend was sitting at 58% at the most. By the time I left the, uh, in 2019, I had already moved uh, infrastructure spend to 71%. Saved 2 billion rands, which ANC used to spend on vanity projects. Their mayor was living overseas more than here in South Africa. They were, they, news, they were spending 8 million rands on newspapers for senior people. Every senior of, official in the city of Johannesburg had DSTV full bouquet. Okay. All these uh, vanity projects, we took uh, the 2 billion rands, put it infrastructure spend. And yeah. we were upgrading uh, substations, we okay. were upgrading informal settlements Thank you. and so forth. A, a quick follow-up on that, uh, Mr. Mushaba. We, we can list the failures of the ANC all night, and many would agree. Uh, we can also agree that uh, you cannot turn things around in a short space of time. It's a valid point. That said, though, now, if you were to get the vote and, and become the mayor again, how long would it take to th turn things around? All said and done in terms of uh, what the ANC has messed up. Because people want to see service delivery sped up. It, it, things need to change quickly because it's reached such a low. How do you plan to speed things up in terms of service no, but delivery? I, th I think, uh, Solomon, we'll be lying to our people if we tell them we'll, you'll be able to turn things around overnight. The city of Johannesburg right now, fact, is that uh, we're sitting with 8 billion rands of infrastructure uh, on, on CAPEX. And with 8 billion rands of CAPEX, with 170 billion, and I can tell you right now, ever since I left, uh, if you do a study right now, the infrastructure's backlog in the city of Johannesburg will be close to 200 uh, billion rands. The city of Johannesburg, I don't know if you're aware, when I took over, they are talking about 100 billion rands uh, over 10 years. There were already 8 billion, uh, I mean 18 billion rands, they had 8 billion rands dead okay. uh, when, when we took over. So, you can, and right now they're running at almost 25 billion rands worth of debt, and you only have 8 billion rands to deal so with in it. Short, you so, what I'm saying time. is that, we need uh, economic activity in, in the city of Johannesburg. Okay. We need the rule of law. Because once on a yearly basis you can increase your revenue, that's when on an every year all basis, right. and you stop corruption, you, you get rid of all the cadres, put in professional people to run the Thank administration. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Imran, I want to take you to the issue of electricity as per what's written in your manifesto. Al Jamaa says it stands for electricity being affordable, and everybody can agree with that, with absolutely no disconnections. The question would be then, how do you prevent abuse? Because if people know that if they don't pay their bills, then there's going to be no disconnections, who's going to pay their bills then? Can you clarify that for us? Okay, so, <coughs> thanks, uh, Alana. By creating employment, uh, I think creating skills and ensuring that we, you know, address these issues in a humane way and find out exactly solutions. So I think from my perspective, particularly at local level, what I've found is that many people do have electricity accounts, they do have electrical, uh, electricity problems, and um, they've been addressed at local level. I accompany many of the residents to the Civic Center uh, many a times to address the issues and see how we can solve it. 
I think it's a deeper rooted problem than just the electricity because of the fact that um, uh, many people are unemployed due to the COVID, etc. So uh, we are faced with the problem of electricity and uh, I'm solution driven and uh, we look at solutions of how to help the people. And that's what we're here to, uh, you know, for the community to help them in terms of solving their problems in terms of the electricity bills and not in, uh, having their electricity or mm. water cut off. I, I think we can all agree with what you've said, right? Uh, there are many people, especially after the COVID period, who've got financial challenges. And I think there have been mechanisms put in place to assist them and payment plans and that kind of thing. But my question is specific to the very general wording in the manifesto, which says that there should be no disconnections. And, and it's unqualified, it's not specified. Now, if we're gonna say no disconnections when it comes to electricity, who's going to pay? And there'll be, everyone will be in arrears, the system will collapse. So the, the, the system has offered uh, grants to um, you know, citizens. We've had the, uh, the SASA grants, etc. So I think there is opportunities to pay. And I think we, we Quiet. must, we, as, as citizens of the country, we should play our role in terms of fulfilling our responsibility of what we use, we should pay for. OK, thank you. Before. Before I close this round, there's one issue that I have to get all of your comments on, and that is the issue of land invasions, uh, illegal informal settlements. I'll go in reverse order. I'm gonna ask for quick, sharp comments of 30 to 40 seconds. Imran, you can go first. Land invasions, illegal settlements, what's Al Jamaa's plan of action? Okay, so it's very, very clear that, uh, you know, in my uh, slogans generally, I say hashtag be humanitarian after hashtag I love Lanasia. So um, the, the point that we need to make is that I think it's also a very deep-rooted problem nationally, not just in Lanasia, but nationally. When I say nationally, th this problem is quite a serious one in terms of housing. So nationally, we've got to find solutions, provide housing, adequate housing, but just not provide adequate housing, but ensure that services are also provided for. So we need to find me mechanisms to ensure that our citizens across the country are taken care of with dignity, respect, and honor, and put into places. Thank you. Herman? Land invasions, many blame you. They say that it went out of control when you were the mayor of Joburg. What's your plan of action as, as Action SA when it comes to illegal settlements? Well, uh, Solomon, the only way you're going to stop uh, illegal um, occupation of land and land invasion uh, is that uh, You've got to create um, employment opportunities for South Africans and uh, stop uh, this uh, uh, situation where Kosatu has destroyed jobs over the last 20 years. Urbanization is nothing that anyone is going to stop. South Africa is not an exception. We've got to close our borders so that South Africa is a, is a sovereign country because, because uh, unfortunately, this illegal immigration is causing massive problems for, for South Africa. So South Africa is not going to be the country where failed state outsource their problems to us. We have to really take care of our own people first before we can, anyone can expect us to take care of people of, of the world. Nazir, in the short term, should informal settlements be abolished? Should the red ants come in? Should they be evicted? They could be long-term solutions, but what's the EFF's position uh, on, 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 on the short term call by some that if they, these settlements have been put up illegally, if the land has been invaded, then remove them. No, there's, there's no such thing as land invasion. Land invasion was 1652. The people that are occupying land, people that are occupying land, now that's their land. That's their land. We cannot allow people to own vast tracts of land that they can never put to use. And they speculate and they want to sell it back to the state. The state has to expropriate all land and distribute it amongst the citizens of this country. We can't prevent black people. We can't allow black people to be landless in the land of their forefathers. That's unjust. We have to expropriate land and distribute it amongst our people. Okay. You won't have land invasion then because everyone will have his own land. All right. <laughs> Sergio, Issa, do you agree? He won't. No. They stole the land. <laughs> <laughs> no, we did not steal the land. Or well, at least I, I didn't. Okay, Sergio, just speak closer to the mic. Uh, we, yeah. Okay. 
Look, from quiet, quiet. From the Democratic Alliance side, um, we don't believe in stealing the land. Obviously, we are against expropriation without compensation. Um, in the city of Johannesburg, we would establish an anti-land invasion unit. Um, most of the land that was actually invaded around Lanasia and Lanasia South were actually provincial land. It wasn't even a local government land. And that's one of the issues that we had is that we didn't have that um, support from the provincial departments. Um, we do need to bring economic opportunities also closer to, to the people. And that's part of the problem is that there is that influx to the city of Johannesburg in particular to try and find these job opportunities. Um, Lanasia knows very well, and Lanasia South knows very well. They go daily without water and electricity because of all of these illegal connections, okay. because of these illegal settlements. Zarina? The issue of land invasion is an historic issue in the past three years. It's a very important discussion. You just speak a little closer to the mic very important discussion, but I don't think we're going to solve a problem right now. If you look at our region, G in particular, it's been invaded in all sides. There's just no space to move anymore. I, Herman, do not want to think that closing the borders is the, U is the cause of the land invasion. We have our own local people that are invading the land. Government has a process and a program of a rapid land release program and that needs to be speeded up. It's not going to be something that's going to be done overnight. And that was probably brought to you by your coalition when you were in power in the three years. Thank you. All right. N now what we're going to do is we're going to ask specific panelists to pose questions to the other. I'll, I'll go in this order again. Imran, is there a question that you would like to pose to Zarina? Yes. Um, Zarina, um, you've mentioned um, and you've admitted that the ANC has failed in terms of governance and uh, also uh, in terms of service delivery as well. So what you're basically saying that there's no honesty, integrity and trust in two years. You've admitted very clearly that in the two years lots of money has been lost. So. What impact did you create as a PR counselor in the last couple of years that you've been in counselor as a, uh, as a counselor in the council to sort or to make a difference uh, in terms of this very particular problem that you've mentioned? Okay, Zarina. Okay, Imran, I did not say the ANC failed, I said we made mistakes. We are on our way to renewal. Okay, quiet, 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 quiet. Continue. All right. Our manifesto, we have under the leadership of our president. Quiet. Let, let's allow systems to speak. dealing with issues of corruption and mismanagement. We have not failed. We have made mistakes. We are on our way to renewal. As a PR counselor serving in these wards, I have had several achievements. We are currently looking at the extension to swimming pool where it's being heated. That was my intervention with our glue partners currently serving in the city of Johannesburg. Okay. In Ward 10 along Nirvana Drive, the installation of electricity boxes due to the continuous outages of waterworks and illegal connection, people had got their boxes in front of their homes. So they have stable supply of electricity. A petition was sent to the city of Johannesburg by the residents of Ward 10 regarding the illegal structure on the Lanasia Gulfview driving range. Thanks to us and the petition committee that I initiated, that structure has been taken away. The Rose Park development, we continue. Okay. I have engaged on the infrastructure capital budget, all hands on deck. I work with all people in the community and we are on our way to getting the Rose Park established with new walkways and proper right. infrastructure for everyone to enjoy. Shukran. Serena, you got a question for Imran? Okay. Do you have a question for Imran or for any of the other panelists? Okay, my question is going to go to all the parties. All of them are hosting, standing for mayors and have great plans. What I'd like to know, what plans do you have in addressing 
the aging infrastructure backlog in the city of Johannesburg, and how much is this going to cost? That's to all the parties, the same question. Okay. I'll, I'll allow the others to respond to that when they come to their respective turns, but Imran, you want to quick, go quickly because you posed the question to Zarina, so if you could just answer hers. Yes, I think the, the problem and the actual challenge is that uh, we know, and you've admitted earlier, that you know billions have been gone out in two years, and you clearly stated that earlier when you admitted so. So the reality is that we need a, an economic hub or an economic way to find funds to solve the infrastructure here in and around Johannesburg. Thank you very okay, much. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Mishaba, a quick response to Zarina's question. Well, I think it's actually quite simple. Uh, if you've got a 170 billion rands infrastructure backlog, you find 170 billion rands to fix uh, that. We, you can't really fix it ideologically. And the only way you fix it, first get rid of ANC cadres from government, put in the professional public service. Okay. Stop, 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 stop corruption. Stop corruption. Okay, quiet. Stop corruption. Make sure that any civil servant who steals a cent of public money that put behind bars and you go after the, the, the money. Get private sector investment in your, in your city. Uh, create an enabling environment for the private sector to create economic activity. Because when you have economic activity, people get employment. When get, people get employment, okay. they pay taxes, and government can then pump, uh, push this money into your infrastructure uh, backlog and the development. OK. Do you perhaps have a question for your? Do you, do you have a question for any of the other panelists, or maybe your former party, the DA? For me, yeah. No, I think uh, well, I can have for both of them the ANC. In fact, I want uh, Mrs. Motala because uh, she mentioned. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. And I, and I really please ask you to really be honest uh, with South Africans and uh, people of uh, this particular region, because she was blaming. She says she was blaming me for land invasions. Your former MMC Dan Bovu, uh, when he was the uh, MMC of housing, I got him arrested for selling land uh, to poor people here in region A. Still protected by the National Prosecuting Authority. Can you give us an update? What's the latest with Dan Bovu's case, please? Is that enough? Okay, quiet, quiet. Thank you. Herman, I think we all know what happened to that case. I'm not going to go into that, but I'd like you to explain the irregular Okay, 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 okay. Okay, thank you, thank you. Proceed. Herman, if you can please explain the irregular fleet contract that National Treasury found to be irregular. It's in the MPEC documents. I serve on MPEC with other political party councillors as well. It's still a huge discussion. And Herman, if you can also explain the contribution of your 11 billion rand to the Field Band Foundation that the public protector found to be irregular. And you want to talk about corruption? You are part of that system. Okay, thank you. I think, Herman? Uh, Suleiman, I, think, I don't think it is fair for me to deal with the delusion. Quiet, I, quiet. I don't think, honestly, it's, uh, it's fair for me to deal with delusional people. Because quiet, quiet. I, I can't hear. I can't hear. Quiet, quiet, quiet. I, I'm struggling to hear what Herman is saying, so that means you're struggling. struggling. Let's give him a chance. Just repeat that again. Um, I've asked a direct question, and mm. and it's not really been answered. Mm. And in return, come out with delusional matters that they've dreamt about in their dreams. I can't answer when people dream and they get me involved in their dreams, I can't answer the is, question. Is there no public protect is fine against... Okay, that, fine. Look, a panelist, whether it's Zarina or Herman or anybody else, if they, fail, if, if they wish not to answer a particular question, is their prerogative. So then you, you draw whatever conclusion you want to draw from there. So you're saying she hasn't answered yours, you're not going to answer hers. No, look, in fact, it's interesting with the public protectors uh, matter. Yeah. Remember, I told you I'm going to take her report under review. Hmm. Watch the space. Okay. 
Nazir, do you have a question for any of the panelists? Uh, I do, yes. Um, and um, you know, uh, just, uh, just an aside, the ANC has failed me, or maybe they have passed, but they've got a very mediocre pass rate, 30%. <laughs> okay, so your question is for who? Uh, okay, uh, Sergio, my brother, um, you you speak of building. An Does he just speak in the mic so that yeah, we can you, hear? You speak of building an inclusive city. Yet in Cape Town, where you've governed for 15 years, um, I was born there, so I know, and I spent my entire life there. You know, when you cross from from Langa as an African township, you cross um, Jake Schuylville Drive, you cross into the Colored Township, which is Bonteville, and then you cross the other road, you cross into the, the white suburb, um, Thornton and Pinelands. So you've had this apartheid spatial divide in Cape Town. And what you've done is you've, you've pushed um, African and colored communities onto the outskirts of Mitchell's Plain and Kailicha, where, where it's almost inhabitable. So because you, because you refuse to use land in more affluent areas to build housing or to develop housing for African and colored people, so how are you going to do it here in Johannesburg? Is Johannesburg going to look like Cape Town? A city okay. of apartheid, Thank which you. is then apartheid, the only apartheid city in South Africa is Cape Town. Are you going to make Johannesburg look like that apartheid city? Sergio Issa, your response? Just a clip for the question. Unfortunately, we've got a very difficult history within South Africa, not in just in, in Cape Town, in Johannesburg, and in most parts of the country. So uh, apartheid spatial development is a reality. So it's not just in Cape Town, it's in Johannesburg. And where we are is an example of that. But also what we also need to establish is that even more recently, we've been asking national government, in particular Patricia DeLille, to allow us to have those pockets of lands that are owned by national government so we can develop closer to the um, city CBDs. So, Yes, we would love to have inclusive developments, in, in not only in Johannesburg, but also in Cape Town, but we're also hampered by national governments as an example in the city of Cape Town model. Okay, okay. finally then, uh, uh, <laughs> very quickly. Yeah, but when you, when you had Tafelberg in Seapoint, when Tafelberg was made available, what the, the province wanted to do was to sell Tafelberg school to a rich property developer at a massive cost. And it was only through the objection of organizations, of civic organizations, and the EFF, and the other party I'm not gonna mention, that after we put pressure on and took them to court, that then the court said that that land okay. must be used for inclusive development. I don't think the DA understands what inclusive right. development quick, is. Quick response, Sergio, you said? Look, I would love to, to dwell more deeply into the localized issue of Cape Town, but for this specific one, I'm not going to be able to answer. Fact remains is that, as an example, as I mentioned now, is that there are four big pockets of lands from national governments that we've been begging, Patricia DeLille in particular, because it falls under her portfolio, to give it to the city of, Jan, um, the city of Cape Town so that we can start developing closer to the city centers. Thank you. So your question, Sergio, to any of the panelists? Um, if you don't mind, I would like to ask Mr.
and the capital budget in terms of okay. major capital projects. Thank you. Quick response. Okay, yes. For, for DA vegetables, for DA service, vegetable service delivery is for me to go and cut grass in Senton. And for me, my priority was to provide the toilets and water in informal settlements. And ANC and DA refused uh, me to, uh, to playing that role. I was okay. not I was not the mayor of grass cutting like the one that you've got now as your current mayor, okay, mayor who's going to be the mayor of grass cutting in Senton. We are here as government not only to serve people of Senton. I live in Senton. People of Senton it's deserve to get services okay. from government. Thank you. But but the poor communities as well. Government has got a responsibility towards them. You cannot say people because they are unemployed, they did not vote for the end, for the deed, they should not get the service. They should have to get the service. Thank so you. I think that is really the biggest problem with Thank the you. With Thank you. Right. All right. We, we're now going to come to the part where we allow you to make quick comments or ask quick questions. Now. Let me just explain one or two things. I see your hands. Uh, we don't, all of you here who have come to support your, your, your respective parties and representatives, I know you love them, but we don't want to allocate too much of time for you to do our praise singing. We want questions, right? Or quick comments. And uh, my colleague, Mohammed Habib Bobat, is going to, Omar Mohamed Baum will come here with the, with the mic. Uh, I see, I'll, I'll take you at a time. Let's take the first three from this side. Uh, Mr. Ayub Metal, the gentleman next to him, and the gentleman behind him, and then we'll come around. Right, we'll come around. We'll try and give as many people a chance. We're going to allow you 30 seconds to pose your question, and we want a quick, short response in 30 seconds. Hello. Hello. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Uh, my question is to Council Imran. I just want to find out how did you manage to do so many good changes in Indonesia? with the short period of time that you were elected. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll take a few questions, then we'll get, we'll get a round of responses from the front. Uh, Mahabam, okay. Quick, yes. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, my name is Rafat Mansour. Alaikum salam. Uh, I'm uh, very excited to see the three-party leader uh, to come here, represent uh, his uh, candidate. Mm. Why you represent your candidate? For me, as a voter, I need to see who is the candidate, the one, the value of him, the one become a counselor for me. Now, you haven't got no trust, or you feel no value or your candidate, let him face the community. All what you people talking now about the Cape Town and all this one. I want to know about my word, nine, my service delivery, and the whole the candidate I will deal with. Thank, Thank you. you. Let, let's go here. OK, OK. I'll ask all the panelists to take notes to the, in terms of the questions that are posed directly to you and in terms of the general questions. Then after a few questions, we'll, we'll give an opportunity. Thank you and very President much. Mohammed. My question is to Mr. Mashaba and his erstwhile allies. Mr. Mashaba talks about expelling people from South Africa, is he aware of the protocols that South Africa has signed? The UN protocols? Is he aware of the AU protocols? Is he aware of the SADC protocols? But I'm sure the only protocol he had taken into consideration when he was mayor of the state of Johannesburg was engaging the state of Israel. None of the other uh, international protocols was addressed by Mayor Mashaba, but the state of Israel was. Thank you very much. Okay, the gentleman with the red stripe shirt in the front, your man about. Good evening. Mr. Okay, just before you continue, I think let's do it this way. Can, can we maybe have a bit of a cue? Uh, whoever wants to ask questions. Unless somebody is not able, then we'll come to you. Then it'll, it'll because I'm going to miss people in between. If you can, if you can just cue up here, right? Yeah, and, and we're going to try and keep it balanced, right, between uh, the parties. I think, Molana, uh, it will be a bit, uh, it's not very balanced yeah. uh, with due respect. Okay, okay. Hold, 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 hold. No, 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 no queue invasion, please. No queue invasion. 
No Q invasion. All right. Uh, the Proceed. How, can, can we have silence? Can, all right. Just, just hold it, right? I'm going I'm to stand in a moment here just to get some order. My colleague, Mufti Musaji, and others are going to sort out the queue because we want it to be somewhat balanced. We don't want all, the can, all, all attendees from one party posing questions. So if we, can just, if, if we can just go back a little bit of the queue as you're standing, and Mufti Musaji will sort it out quietly whilst we continue with the, with the questions there. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, silence, silence, silence. Okay, quiet, thank you. Okay, my question is to uh, Mr. Mashaba. Uh, I must compliment you how you call the ANC criminals when you opened up. But further on, my question to you is, the city of Johannesburg passed a resolution to name two streets in honor of Ahmad Timor and Amina Desai. And this was under the ANC. When you became the mayor, you refused to act on this resolution. Even with the permission or from the Timor family and former MEC, Mr. Vadi, who approached you on a personal level on this particular matter. You have abandoned us, right? How do you expect us or why should we support you now in future? Thank you. All right, I'm going to hold the questions there for now and allow the panelists to respond. I think, Mulan, there was one to you. You can go first then. Yes, thank you very much, Mulana. Quick responses, right? So we can get okay. back to the floor. In assisting and serving the community, I think uh, the question that was posed to me, I must say that I work from my heart. It takes passion, it takes com commitment, dedication, and sacrifice to serve our community. I love my community. Hashtag I love Lanasia. Thank you. Uh, Armin, there was multiple questions posed to you. You can respond to them. Yeah, well, I think two questions were posed to me regarding uh, international protocols and uh, agreements. Uh, I was running a municipality. That is why the city of Johannesburg dismally failed under the previous mayor, spending uh, millions of rents with international travel, spending more time overseas than here at home fixing our local issues. And that's what I needed to really focus on. I indicated to you, I inherited the city with 170 billion rents of infrastructure backlog. Coming to a question of uh, 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 street namings and buildings, and I said, that's a mistake that ANC made. Every time when they went to work every morning, as far as they're concerned, service delivery was uh, street namings and the building namings. And as always maintained, if you want to name anything right now, our focus is let's build new infrastructure, let's build new clinics, new whatever, and call them anything you want. But we don't have, we cannot when people don't have electricity, don't have water, people don't have toilets, we must take money in renaming streets and so forth. We must focus the where things actually matter and we will okay. continue on that with our limited resources. Thank you. Anybody wants to respond to anything else? Okay. Uh, Mr. Kerner. Yes, Mr. Mishaba, the, the Israel question. He's saying you, has, you haven't answered this question on Israel. I've, I've, in, I've indicated to him, uh, when, when I was the mayor, they, I engaged in, you know, every quarter, I used to host uh, all interna um, international ambassadors in this country. It was, it was not uh, selective for if anyone. So I think it's, it's absolutely, totally wrong. Ask the, the, the Palestinian embassy, my, in, my contact uh, with them. There's no embassy that I ignored. I used to invite uh, embassies to visit me, and we have the discussion. If you're not happy, it's your issue. We, let, but I let, was let's listen to his the response. Infrastructure backlog that our country and city. Was okay, situated. thank you, Nazir. Uh, shukran, Maldana. Uh, the brother over there, you asked me why I'm not having the EFF candidate here. Yeah. The ANC doesn't have the candidate. The DA. Neither, it's only, it's only, it's only, it's only, it's only uh, uh, brother Imran that uh, is a ward candidate here. So, and Zarina, so I don't know why you single me out, but here's the, here's the important thing. Okay, here's silence. Here's the important thing. It doesn't matter who sits here at the EFF. It's going to be the same level of commitment. Commitment to the people of Lanasia. Even the 
Okay, okay, okay. Look at it. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Look, if I'm if I'm in the if I'm in the area, I'll come and in introduce the candidate to the community myself. But the regional secretary of the EFF is here. They will come and introduce the candidate to you in in the coming days. All right. Okay. Th thank you so much, Nazir. Sergio, anything you want to respond to? Zarina, anything? Do you want to respond to any of the comments that came from the floor? Any of the questions? All right, people, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to really ask for silence now. Otherwise, we're not going to hear each other. It's going to be a futile exercise. We want to try and get in as many questions and comments and allow you to leave timelessly so you can get home before curfew. We don't want anybody arrested here. Yeah? All right, now, in order to, to create some balance, we're going to take two quick questions or comments from those in, in official party gear, right? So that it's not dominated by one party. So I see your action essay. Quick comment. comment. Can, can, we, can we have silence across the board, please, so that we can hear the comments and questions and get quick responses? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum My salam question wa to Councillor Imran. In your opening statement, you made a statement that you have an open door policy. And we both agreed that you are now one year, approximately one year into your tenure as councillor. Uh, is it not true that in the past year, you have picked many residents of Ward 9 off your service delivery groups, but you did not agree when they, take, they took you up on service, service delivery issues. And another issue, the ISO that has become land CBD of the tax hearing. We understand that you are not responsible, that that fell to the previous administration that came before you. But you came to the business people of Ward 9 and asked them to give the go ahead, not to fight it. You gave them certain promises with regards to hygiene, security, me and yourself. We, we addressed this. I gave you suggestions okay. what to be done. I'm gonna hurry you a little bit none up. of those were delivered upon. Do you agree on that? OK. Next question or comment quickly. This is to all the candidates that are sitting here. We must understand that this e election is very, very important. It's more important than the national election. Secondly, whatever you promise, whatever you endeavor to do, is it measurable? Is it achievable? Have you got the budget? Have you got the availability to do what is okay. necessary? And remember one thing, try not to promise as much as you possibly can, because unfortunately, we cannot deliver. Thank you. We must be realistic and we must be open about it. Thank you. Thank you. Next. OK. Um, my question is going to be addressed to Mrs. Mutala. Mrs. Mutala, when housing is becoming a problem, in 2001, um, the Eastern Metropolitan Local Council authorized, the, gave, um, actually approved for a township establishment right here in the land that is here in Linasia. Why did it take so long for ANC not to utilize that land. And currently, the land, the land is being occupied by foreign people. OK. Thank you. EFF, two questions between two people or two comments, quickly. Um, Assalamu alaikum. My question is also to Mrs. Mutala. Um, I just want to ask her, you stated it. You need, you have a plan, a strategic plan for over 10 years. So 27 years, and we added 10 years. So how many years must we wait for services from the ANC government? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, my question, uh, it goes uh, like this. Wherever the ANC and the DF government, the only opportunities they've delivered for young people, they've made drugs to be more available than job and educational opportunities. Now, it goes to you, uh, Honorable Nazir. What are you going to do different, even to bridge uh, that social gap and economical gap between the communities, okay. since that we have been? We've had two from Action SA, two from the EFF. Let's take some others now. No, no. We wait a bit, right? Let's give the others a chance. We've had two from the EFF already. Thank you very much. Uh, everybody's from the computer. All right, fine. Fair enough. Quickly. Okay. 
Amanda! Amanda! Uh, greetings, everyone. My name is Bongani Ngubani. Uh, I, I, I want to ask uh, Al Chama because of racial issues around, uh, uh, around the lands. We know what's happening around the lands. My question uh, will never go to EANC and DA again. I think I might ask uh, Honorable Naziri, no, no Mr. Mashaba. Uguti, remember, Uguti, we've got Ama South African citizens that are living under squad, uh, Guma squatters around the Chobek, specifically in Region G. And uh, those people are not given proper water and sanitation. Those people are supposed to be evicted as, as, as soon as yesterday. And uh, they are calling those people, ask Ashegashi, South Africans, Uguti, we are, we are informal squatters. How is it possible which is in our own land? What is it that you're going to do that will benefit the residents of South Africa or black child? Okay, thank you. Uh, I have a question for the so-called beloved uh, here on the end of the table. Um, can I ask this gentleman why he picked a false fight? with the lady from the ANC, when he and his party are in bed with the ANC. We know that a vote for Al Jamar is a vote for the ANC. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Ne next question. Thank you so much. My name is Takan Charini. I'm silence, start... silence, silence. Let's respect him. Let's I'm give him a chance. I'm going to start by asking or just giving Al Jama some advice when they pick up their candidates. Stop going to corner car dealership shops and pick up people who don't have the capacity to lead and make them councillor candidates. Uh, people who are bylaw breakers, who go around painting old age home walls, who go around painting clinics, who go around advertising in places where they're not supposed to be advertising their organization. All right. Number two. The same question to the same concept. One, one question, right? Let's give others a chance. Behind. All right, thank you. Yes, but we're trying to give as many people a chance as possible. No, no, no. <laughs> come, come quickly, quickly. Let's move on. I'm wrapping up. And how can we trust you when you go to the old age home and pick up fights with old people? How can we trust you when you go to the clinic and you threaten people and you get involved in issues that don't concern you as the councillor. Okay. Number two, to Mr. Emen Mashaba, you claim to be clean and whatnot, but there's an outstanding question that our councillor candidate asked you about the money that you donated to an, honor, to, to an NPO that is linked to your wife, that is linked to your family member. Then you come here and you stand up uprightly and say you are not corrupt. To the DA, we know that all you care about all right, time. Thank you. Le we've, we've, we've had from the Action SA, we've had from the EFF. Let's give the others a chance. No, no, no. You've got an Action SA t-shirt, right? Let, let's just be a bit balanced. No, no, thank you. Everybody's from the community. No, no. Everybody's from the community. Le le let's have chances for the others. Le let's be fair, right? Uh, th those who have official t-shirts, we've taken two, two at a time. So we've got to give others a chance. Yes, TA, right. for having me on. Uh, I'm Imran Sirat. I'm standing for the DA Ward Councillor. Yeah. My question to the people that are on stand, obviously not to Mr. Sergio, is in terms of what you are offering, what have you served the community and done for the communities that you plan on serving for? I know what I've done. It's recorded. So... Well, no, no. Let's not let's, let's do that. Let's not do that. Carry on. You can talk to me and I'll tell you what I've done for you without you knowing. So my question... My question to the candidates or to the people that are here is, can you show what you've done for us instead of making promises going forward? Because I can. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, we're going to just hold there for a moment and get some responses. I'm going to ask my colleagues to try and sort out and give a few more people who haven't had a chance. That will be the last round. For now, I think, uh, Zarina, you can go first on this round of responses. Um, let me go with the last one first, because I think, the f OK, the land establishment I need to, I need clarity on which land exactly is the lady talking about. 
then I'll be able to identify who the land belongs to and why there was no proclamation. 27 years of service. We're not here to make any promises. We are going to work with our communities to better our communities. And that's going to be in partnerships with all stakeholders in our communities. We really cannot sit back and say nothing happened over 27 years. We really can't. I have alluded that we have made mistakes, but going forward, we're going to work with you, next to you, and we will thrive. And this Lanasia will be a better place for all of us to live in for the proper services. Uh, by the candidate-elect, um, Imran Sidat. Um, and I just want to make this comment. I think it's very important for all the candidates-elect party leaders, over the years, okay, my serving as a PR counselor in the city of Johannesburg, I have worked with well with every single candidate-elect standing here today on their party labels. I must say they have something right. And I actually feel very pleased that they're all contesting the same ward. I've been there to guide them and I do that till today. So whatever it is and whoever wins the ward, I will promise to work with each and every one of you. But I think we are going to win ward nine and I will continue to service you and continue to work alongside each and every one of you going forward. I'm not making any promises. We all know how systems work. We know how budgets are allocated. We know exactly what Wyatt. happens. Councillor Clardy, this is not, this, this is not council, okay? <laughs> so, going forward, there are no promises, but I do give you my pledge that I will continue to serve you with honesty and integrity, and I have your interests at heart. We have lots of issues in this community, lots of social problems. Okay. There are societal issues. We need all hands on deck thank going you. forward. I thank you. Sergio Issa. Mr. Um, if I'm not mistaken, there's basically two open questions. Um, so the first one was um, if our promises are possible. Yes, I would say that it is possible. Why? Because where we govern, we govern well. We've got a proven track record. It is not what we are saying, it's what Ratings Africa has said, it's what COCTA has said, it's what uh, Status A is saying, it's what Auditor General is saying, the latest news um, ratings have said, News 24 ratings have said that we are the best run municipalities in South Africa. In the top 20, top 20 best run municipalities in South Africa, 12 of those are the Democratic Alliance. Not a single DA municipality in the bottom 20 worst municipalities are the DA. So okay. yes, we've got the knowledge, we've got the know-how, and we can bring that into the city of Johannesburg. Thank you. With regards yeah. to the second question. Sure, quickly. Okay, so basically what we've done. So as we as the Democratic Alliance, we don't believe that we are one person. We don't believe that we work in silos. In the city of Johannesburg, we had 270 councillors, over 30,000 employees, if I'm not mistaken. You needed 136 people to vote to get a policy through, to get an IDP through, to get a budget passed. And in those short three years, the Democratic Alliance-led government replaced 325 kilometers of water and sewer pipes, which reduced water leaks. We resurfaced 938 kilometers of road. There was over 100,000 outstanding billing queries. In the three years, we reduced it down to 9,000. Uh, 9, okay. We invested over and repaired, upgraded 12 substations. We opened uh, rehabilitation centers. We extended um, operating hours in, in, in um, clinics. So we achieved in three years, we achieved a lot more than what the previous government had done in over two decades. Now again, as I say, we don't work in silos. We don't believe that I myself did it. It was the DA-led coalition that, uh, that achieved you. this. Thank Nazir? you. Thank you so much, uh, Molina. Um, the first question was, um, what are we going to do? Silence. What Thank are you. we going to do about drugs? We, um, we've, uh, within our manifesto, we've committed to opening drug centers in areas like Bopalong, Seboking, and Boipatong. But along with drug rehabilitation, we have to create opportunities for our youth. 
and I believe it is only the EFF's policy on job creation in sourcing all the work that other municipalities run by the DA and the ANC outsource to their white friends. The municipality under the ANC and the DA is just an agency. Whatever needs to be done, they pass it on to a company that's contracted to do the work. The EFF government will insource all the necessary skills required to deliver services to communities. So we will use that to create jobs, especially for youth. Right. So it will keep youth are going to drugs because there are no opportunities for them under an ANC or a DA-run municipality. Um, in terms of informal settlements, we are going to revisit the, this issue of informal settlements. I don't like that word because people live there. Those are residences. So we're going to give people proper size stands with services, electricity and water, and we will create uh, programs to have formal housing acceptable. Okay. Not these RDPs of the ANC and the DA, proper right. houses. Thank you. All right. Uh, there was another question. Very quickly, please. Hey? Yeah. Quickly, quick response. Oh, no, it's fine. Okay. Um, we'll do this. Evan? You know, I think I would really like to echo the sentiments expressed and conveyed by this gentleman that we must be very careful uh, as public representatives what we promise. I indicated to you earlier on that when you have a 170 billion rands hold and you only got 8 billion rands to go out and promise people heaven and earth, it's a mistake that we can obviously do to society. And, and people end up actually believing politi politicians and losing confidence in political parties and politicians. And a society that can ever lose interest in politics, unfortunately, the society is doomed to fail because then they will end up being governed by criminal syndicates because criminals are going to take advantage of the empathy. So successful nations survive because people take interest in politics. You don't have to be in public office, but you as a voter, as a resident, you have to take interest in politics and hold politicians accountable so that they don't go on, keep on lying to you, thinking that you are fools, like the ANC people are trying to do with me. Phil Ben Foundation, uh, we, are in the day, we live in the days of uh, technology. Just check on go Google Phil Ben Foundation and see if uh, it's a, an organization owned by him and Mashaba and his family. Just Google it. Just uh, right now. And okay. they keep on lying to you that uh, this organization uh, belongs to me and, and my family. That's right. actually, you know, the kind of stuff that uh, a government that we in 1994 voted for, we thought uh, the, they were a liberation organization, they were leaders of society. Right. But they are happy to come in front of the nation okay. and actually lie. Thank you. And I'm saying it's just check right now, go into Google and see if that MPO belongs to me or my family. Thank you. Ibrahim? Yes, um, sorry. Um, I think, uh, let quiet, me be quiet, quiet. Uh, in the last two days, I probably slept two hours. Uh, I really appreciate and thank the Lanasians, by and large, for the relationship I enjoy with them, in that I can safely say that the relationship is one that has been built in this few months to such an extent that the communication levels, the activism, the proactive engagement between myself and community has been tremendous. Uh, Quiet. Bar for a few of the candidates or the supporters that continuously criticize me, um, I think that is what you call pet petty politicking. I've noticed it. It goes out into social media, and that is not the way we conduct ourselves respectfully with dignity and honor. So I once again thank the community for their support and allowing me the opportunity to serve them in the way I do 
That is why I sacrifice what's, what passion, commitment, and dedication to this particular community of Lanasia. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hashtag Thank you. I love Lanasia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Very quickly. Yes. Um, I think this. Yes. You belong to the South African Action Party, right? You are a candidate. No. You are a strong supporter. I haven't seen you all this while, in all this period, engage me in a dignified and honor honorable way. Like many of the other citizens, if we do it as a community in unity, we can support one another, but this needs to be done in a way where you yourself, hashtag I love Lanasia, you love Lanasia, you make the difference, you come with me, we solve the problem. But if you want to criticize on social media and attack people and feel this is the correct way, my friend, Okay, thank right. you. Let, let's agree to disagree, right? Okay. Uh, we, we, we're out of time, so I'm just going to take a last round of quick questions and comments, and then we wrap. Thank you, thank you. Right, let's give preference to those who haven't had a chance. Not, not the parties now. The ANC didn't get a chance. Right, quick question, and 30 seconds each, please. Then last round of responses, and we're done. Um, thank you. My, my name is Tavo Mabuya. Quickly. My, my question will be directed to the Al Jama the DA and the EFF. It goes like this. How would you best describe the Lenesia community, inclusive of all the surrounding areas or informal settlement, based on non-sexism, non-racialism, and non-sectarianism? Thank you. Very quickly. Very, very quickly. Uh, we don't want anybody else joining the queue now. There's not going to be time. Good evening. My name is Sheldon Mudley. My uh, question is to Issa from the, uh, not question. But I see clarity from Isa from the DA and as well. To Closer Musa. to the mic. Okay. And as well to um, Imran Musa. Can I go ahead? Okay. Thank my you. question. Can I just? My question to Mr. Imran Musa is that there's a clause on the IEC which states that every any no one what the, that was in once found insolvent or went under debt review should stand as a council. I recently saw that in 2014 um, you applied for sequestration or to go under insolvency. So my question to you would be, do you qualify to be a ward councillor and are you rehabilitated? Thank you. Yes. Quickly. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. I got a question for the ANC. Auntie Zarina, you said the reason for your party's corruption is due to mistakes. But mistakes are sometimes that's something that you learn from. ANC has been known for corruption for endless years. How many more mistakes do you need before corruption comes to an end? Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is TK. I'm a member of the Ahmad Katrada uh, Lens Youth Club. So, first and foremost, I would like to say, guys, we lost a lot of people due to COVID. We are cramped up here. Can we just get some space also? I lost close friends, and it's really sad. That's how I was standing there with my hands up. And secondly, I would like to just ask all the parties. It's fair enough that you're playing on old politics tactics, but one thing is you don't speak about futuristic movements. You don't speak about the youth. You don't speak about our climate justice or anything. It's all about this party did, that party did. I don't know who to vote for because all I hear is he did, she did, he did, he, she did. Who do I trust as a youth? Who do I tell my brothers and sisters to vote for? Okay. Just, just before we proceed, Mr. Mashaba needs to leave. They've got, they got a legal matter that they're attending to. Uh, your closing remarks or any responses, and then you can take leave, sir. Yeah. No, thank you very much, first of all, uh, for Radio Islam for giving us this great opportunity. It's something that we truly honor and appreciate. Let me just really respond to the youth uh, who says he's confused as to who to vote for. Please, uh, fellow South Africans, for this democracy to mature, we have to engage. Listen to people, judge what they do than what they say, but don't really give up on politics and really say you are confused. Unfortunately, that's how democratic systems work. People are going to offer you, they're going to engage you, 
but ultimately you are the one who must make the decision make the decision take the responsibility for your own life and the decision that you make don't let other people decide for you thank you very much i'm afraid to colleagues you are aware i've got a matter tomorrow with the iec we have turned our party into a logo and it's a matter that i'm dealing with i have to go and speak to my senior thank council you. thank you for and your time i promise really that i'll be it. back home by time thank you so much thank you Okay, we, we continue very, very quickly. We want to wrap up now. Okay, as is going out, you can see. All right, let, let, let's proceed. Let's continue quickly. All right, let's take the quick, quickly the last comments and then we'll conclude. Uh, Mr. Osmani, you can, you can just join here to make your remark. Uh, good evening, Quiet. everybody. Right. Uh, my question will be directed to you, uh, Honorable uh, Mutara. Uh, 2001, there was an establishment, documentation is there, that the, 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 the portion 1301, plot 129, is established as a, as a, as a what to call it, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a township. Ever since then, we've got so many people that have been dying because of the trees that are still there uh, and making an injuries. The, the dumping site is all over the show. The kids are getting sick each and every now and then. So I would like to know from you, on the very same portion, there are people that are buying the land and make, building up the walls and making some businesses. So I would like to know from you, is there anything that maybe so far, since from 2001, that you are prepared to do in terms of red and savings and assisting the lives that are, we are losing okay. at the same, very same portion? Thank, Thank you. you. Takari, quickly. They say the only true mayor of Lens. Okay, can we ask those who are, who, are, who are departing to please do silently? We want to wrap up the program with everybody being able to listen. Takari. Assalamu alaikum, Mosim bin Rabat. Good evening, good afternoon. No, they didn't and they didn't Sanna, I want to know our roads in the nation is hell of a bed. We need to do something about it. People are driving on the roads, they ask me what's happening on the roads. Even Kabastan Road is bad and Sanna. Go out, we never look at all of the nation oh. area. Even the taxi ring side is bad. Please and Sanna, do something about it because why? I'm answerable for the community for it. And so I need to ask you, please reply to us and tell us. Thank you. What might be done? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Osmani. Oh. Um, I think I silence. Olana. Silence. That it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that Aman Mashaba ducked the question that was really aimed at him. Now, if Aman Mashaba is going to stand for the mayor, it will be the biggest disgrace to the city of Johannesburg. Because under Mr. Mashaba's watch, there was a 4.8 million rand misappropriated tender on the tech grounds. To date, must under Mashaba's rule, they have not answered it, that they put it under the carpet. I also want to say this much, that Mr. Mashaba is living in an ivory tower. The Abu, Abu, Abu Azwat Institute asked him for a meeting for over 18 months. He deliberately did not entertain us in a meeting. So if you're gonna have a man like that as a mayor, how the heck is he going to serve the people of this country? Thank you, thank you. I have one last question to Zanina. Mm. I also want to know, that Silence. That there are inherent failures that have occurred with regard to the Abu Azwat, Abu Bakr Azwat drive. Now, the Abu Bakr Azwat drive's failures occurred, the Abu Bakr Azwat drive's failures occurred as a result of the provincial ministry of roads together with the city of Johannesburg's JRA. Today, that road is in a very, very terrible condition. And it's bringing disgrace and dishonor to the struggle icon under whom it's been named. It is also part of nation building, that you build infrastructure that creates dignity for the people. Thank you. But they failed, and they need to do that. Thank you. Very, very quickly, we want to wrap up, people. This question is posed to the DA. You guys won in 2011 as well as in 2016. Why didn't you guys improve Lanesha's unemployment rate? I'm not talking about 
myself included here as well, and all the surrounding, my friends, family, does that. A lot of people are still unemployed. What, what has the DA done during those preceding periods to actually improve any of the unemployment rates? All right, thank you. Thank you. There's been a last from the EFF, if there's anyone from the XRC, my, because we took my, three Mine is just a comment. Uh, Mr. Imran Musa, please, ask your people to stop threatening our councillor candidate. We ask you nicely. Please, stop it, because they go patrol next to a house. We don't know what they want. Thank you. Please. Last one from Action SA. Sorry, no, your, your director. colleague wants to speak. Firstly, let's be fair. You said no more political organizations. I said for and that you now, now you, you're going to waste time to arguing or you're going to give your colleague okay. a chance. Give him a chance uh, to speak. Al Jama, you are registered in more than three wards as a ward councillor candidate. How the hell are you going to navigate around that? Hello, everyone. Uh, my question to Al Jama, actually. Uh, I live in Extension 7. I don't know if anybody, any of you guys know. Uh, a taxi rank of 40 years was moved from uh, extension 5 into my street, into my driveway. I have proof of uh, Mr. Imran Musa on Facebook claiming how wonderful job he's done. Silence, silence. Fixing the Topaz secondary problem when, when actually he only moved the problem into my driveway. And then turned around and said that he was not involved in this whole situation. All right. right. I want to know what is the councillor doing about that situation because we have been dealing with this thing for about six months or even longer and we have got no response and no help from Al Jama. They've only created a bigger problem and turn around and okay. say it's not his jurisdiction. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right. We're going to have now the final round of responses. You can include your concluding remarks in that. 90 seconds each. Uh, Imran, you can go first. Okay. Basically, it's very easy when we busy petty politicking to make some very untruthful, unverified statements. Uh, I think my actions is speak louder than words. I've proved my worth over the last couple of months. I've done what needed to be done in Indonesia. I've hit the ground and I humbly submit that I have sacrificed and dedicated myself to the, sec uh, to the benefit of the Lanasians. Thank you very much. Nazib? Okay, is this concluding remarks? Sure, and your responses. Okay, um, uh, shukran so much, Maulana. Um, municipalities are at the cold face of service delivery. They are the ones that deliver services in our communities. So in this country, the most important services that we want is electricity, water, proper roads, and the huge problem, housing. So, um, so the reason why these have Silence, suffered, silence, silence. The reason why this has suffered in South Africa is because, as I've mentioned earlier, municipalities have become agencies. Whatever needs to be done gets outsourced to an external service provider. So under an EFF municipality, we're going to build proper capacity. We're going to employ electricians, plumbers, carpenters, engineers. Silence, silence. Because those are the things that are hap lacking in our municipalities. That's why municipalities can't deliver services. So we're going to build that capacity. We're going to deliver services. We're going to deliver it faster because we won't be reliant on some external company to deliver those services. We'll be delivering it ourselves as an EFF-run municipality. And in terms of those opportunities that will be created within the municipality, 50% of those opportunities will go to youth and women. So we've I've mentioned youth several times, and the young man says he's heard nothing about youth. We must also teach young people to listen. <laughs> so, so, so yes. So as much as we're going to do what we what needs to be done to uplift youth and to uplift women, we also want youth to support the EFF okay, come the first of November, 2021. Sergio Isa. 
Sergio? Just like um, Unfortunately, the sound is quite bad, so I wasn't able to, to capture at least one of the, the questions, I think, which was directed at me. But I did get, with regards to the youth opportunities, which was directed to everyone. So we obviously support youth development. Uh, youth is the future of our country, and they, they are the most important um, residents of our city. Um, we believe in, in um, establishing more opportunity centers throughout the city to support businesses and encourage entrepreneurship. Um, we definitely need more skills uh, for jobs and apprenticeship programs for young people to gain valuable skills and work experiences. Um, we also believe in fair access to EPWP job opportunities and fair allocation to local um, contracts through the, an audited electronic um, system. Um, we believe that, at least in the city of Johannesburg, we can make it an economic hub of the country and make it back to where it's supposed to be as an economic hub, not only just in the country, but in the continent. And youth play a pivotal role in that uh, system of ours. Thank you. Thank you. Zarina? Thank you. I just want to say I am one of the female contestants contesting this ward. I am a woman's leader. I have a vast experience in governance regarding local government. My real aim in the next five years is to work with communities to produce better communities and better services, all our basic services. We have huge societal problems regarding drug abuse, women abuse, GBH. And I think together, working with all women groups, we're going to achieve this and make a safer, safer society for all of us. I currently serve as a board member on the Amit Katharada Foundation. I also serve as a board member on the Stara Drug and Wellness Rehabilitation Center. I'm also on the committee for the Frail Care Center of the Amit Mia Kasim, Frail Care Center for Males in Extension 1. Today, I'm humbly appealing to the people of Ward 9 to go out and vote for me as a woman's leader, to work with you, besides you, and to vote for the ANC on both ballots. Let's make the difference, building better communities with you, and create a prosperous and safe society for all. I thank you. Thank you. We would like to say thank you to everyone who participated and attended this evening. To all our panelists, the best of luck. Uh, may it go well for all of you and for the country most importantly. And to all those listening on Radio Islam, Salam Media, uh, Voice of the Cape, ITV and IFM, good night. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.